I'm David Lee from Base Boss, here to introduce you to the updates and highlights of the Mark III line of products that have just been released. This is a DV12, and the, although the cabinet hasn't changed and the components have not changed, we have changed the amplification and processing. The new amplification in the case of the tops is asymmetrical. Previous generation of these had symmetrical amps. They were 3,000 watts. Um, this amp um, output equivalent rating is 3,200 watts. But what's good about this asymmetry is that 800 watts are for high frequency, 2,400 watts are for low frequency. Previous generation had the maximum differential would be 1600, 1400. So essentially we have significantly more power available in the low frequency, which is, it's never the tweeter channel that limits the output. It's always gonna be the low frequencies that are gonna be limiting. So this allows us to get a little bit more power to the low frequency, and uh, we don't need more than 800 watts in the high frequency in any of these things, so we're, we're, we're well sorted there. These offer higher rail voltages. Uh, the voltage between the rails is higher, and that means we can create a little bit more dynamic power, a little more SPL from the low frequency channel than we could previously. Again, like I said, previous generation cabinets are not obsolete. Uh, there's not that many dB in that difference. So when you consider that it takes a doubling of power to get 3 dB, going from 1600 to 2400 is not a huge number of decibels, but it, it is something that allocates resources better and um, we can benefit from that. The new DSP has improved analog to digital and digital to analog converters, um, better codecs basically, uh, lower noise floor, higher resolution. The new processor is 96 kilohertz sampling rate and has a lot more processing power and processing capability. We have increased the resolution and applied more refined tuning due to the ad advanced and increased capacity of the processor. The new processor has the ability to store twice as many presets uh, at the touch of a button. So each button push gets you to the next preset of eight now. And after the eighth one, you push the button again, it goes back to the first one. The inputs are uh, showing more information we have a, a power on indicator. We have signal present indicator. We have uh, 12 dB of headroom, 6 dB of headroom indicated. And then when the uh, compressors are active, you have a, a limiting indicator. So you know that you're uh, approaching limit. There is no clipping indicator because we can't, effectively you can't clip the amplifier. So you can't clip the output. It is possible to clip the input if you do silly things, but with an ordinary mixer running ordinary signal, which is to say uh, a normal plus four mixer, which gives you a plus 24 dB peak, uh, you'll be able to run that. If you don't do anything beyond that, the inputs won't clip. Uh, we have added, well, we have the, con the uh, thermal warner, warning, which indicates that the amplifier might be Limiting its output because of uh, excess heat buildup, that's not likely to happen unless it's in direct sunlight or something like that, but uh, it is there to tell you what's happening. Um, and there's a protect light. This light will light up red if the amplifier goes into a fault mode or if it's muted in the software and you'll see that light red. Um, and then finally, this is a comm link. So, communications link. Uh, that means that you are connected to a network and that is another major element of the update. Each DSP uh, amplifier has a two port switch in it and so you can uh, connect to a router or connect directly to a computer and you can also just link from one cabinet to the next as many as you have basically. The, the limit is beyond any practical sound system size that uh, we can conceive of. And what you can do then is you can change levels, change presets, and you can group 
types of boxes together. Say, for instance, you can group all your tops in one group and group all your subs in another group. And then you can adjust the levels independently on the tops and the subs in real time uh, as you have the system operating. Another thing that's worth mentioning for those who might have uh, older Base Boss cabinets, uh, they are not obsolete. They are compatible with these. The alignments uh, still align. So if you have existing subs and you want to add a top, there's no incompatibility there. Uh, one of the nice things about this new DSP is that when you change presets, you can change them during the show with no dropout. It's seamless. It basically just seamlessly transitions from one preset to another with no loss in sound. It just adjusts the filters, etc., without a silent moment in between. The presets that are on board, I say there's eight. When you connect via the network, you will be able to access additional presets that are in this release. And as new releases come out, there'll be more presets available. The actual storage on the unit is 100 presets. And uh, there will be three levels of access to this. So if you have these boxes in your inventory and you want to rent them out to someone, you can lock them so that you don't have the uh, person you're rented them to having access to that. Um, and then you can connect your software, enter your password, and you'll be able to make changes to things that you wouldn't want other people to make changes to. Levels of access will also include the ability to store in some of those 100 presets. You will need to connect a computer to engage those presets. Um, and if you do push one of the button, the, uh, the one of the button that sets presets, it will not revert back to one of the stored presets, it will go back to one of the eight. So if you do store a preset and you want to access it, you connect your computer, you store it. If you then power the gear down and then power it back up, it will load in the preset that you stored or recalled most recently. And so if nobody pushes any buttons, it will stay in that preset without the computer being connected. So one of the really neat things that's going to be possible with these is that I mentioned updates and releases. Um, we will be able to apply uh, new options to the presets and those options or any updates that we find might be helpful will be available for download and you can load them into your box um, via a network connection. Speaking of network connections, one of the kind of neat things about this um, with networking and computer connectivity, it can be a little bit problematic. These are super handy because if the box is connected to the network that you're on via a Wi-Fi router or directly plugged into your computer. If this is connected to that network, the software will find the boxes and it has the, the name of the box on the labeling so you'll know what you're seeing and you can open them, edit them, close them, group them, etc., etc., within the software. Within that context, you'll also be able to, with your password, stored, uh, you'll be able to save presets uh, on board and save presets off board. In other words, you'll be able to save them to your computer. Uh, you will not be able to edit the factory presets and there will be things in here that you won't be able to edit, uh, but there will be limited controls that you'll be able to apply to set up for specific venues. For instance, if you go back to a certain venue and you find that a certain setup works well there, you can save that and then just recall it when you go back and, and you don't have to refigure all the whatever delays and stuff like that. You can, you can have a recallable version of that. Now on the subject of the amplifiers, one of the things that changes, and I can't point at one, but the subwoofer amplifiers and the subwoofer DSPs are now all the same. And so they are more easily intercompatible in the sense that you'll be able to connect to them and communicate with them uh, remotely and also that the amplifiers for the subs are now universal voltage, so uh, 100 to 240 volts. They're actually, marginal operating is, is 90 to 250. So if you're having on generator issues and it's sagging, it's not gonna lose any output relative to 220 
until you go below 110, down to 100 volts, you lose a little bit of output. Uh, so anywhere uh, that you're likely to use these, you'll, you'll get the full output that's available from the cabinet. Uh, the advantage with the 220 volt connectivity is that obviously you can use uh, fewer circuits. You know, you get uh, um, more power per circuit with a higher voltage, so you can use a single 20 amp circuit uh, of, of 220 volts um, to do what you would need 220 amp circuits of 120 volts to do, so less cable um, and uh, more boxes on a, a given run, and uh, lower gauge cable. So a lot of times if you're running greater distances, if you can get the voltage up, you, you don't have to run as thick of a feed. The level control is essentially um, just that, um, and uh, you can adjust that relative to the sub. In terms of uh, integration, the boxes have always been and will continue to be intercompatible. So you can pair any subwoofer with any top box um, and you can, comp you can add different subwoofers in the system. So you can have uh, mismatched cabinets, you can have ZV28s and PS21s and they'll work happily together. And you can combine that with any top box. Obviously that doesn't go beyond the scope of physics, so if you have two boxes that are just not arrayable, you can't just stick them next to each other and, and get perfect arraying. But if you have two boxes of, say for instance, a DV12 type, you know, you can array one on top. So they have the tweeters adjacent and then they array. Um, and that is uh, just a matter of facilitating the signal and setting the presets the same. Another thing that is an improvement in the context of the top SAMPs is the duration of uh, peak output. We have roughly a hundred times longer duration of peak output on these amplifiers than the previous ones. And uh, so the, even the peak voltage is roughly the same, a little bit more with these, uh, the, the sustainability of that is, is, is greater. And for mid highs, that's not as significant as it is for subwoofers. So uh, when you're starting to use the low end capacity of this, it, it, it makes it a little bit more capable of sustaining and reproducing the, the low frequencies. Now, generally, you know, we make, we're base boss, we make subwoofers and, and the tops are intended to be used with subwoofers, but some of the tops, particularly this one and, and a couple others, can be used in full range if you don't need that high SPL. And when you switch to the higher presets, you'll be able to access more of the power in the amplifier for the mid-range um, because you're not demanding it for the low end. And that gives you another advantage of higher SPL from these cabinets. Something else that uh, is related to that is that the new DSP, the new processing, I mentioned it's a much more powerful processor. It has a much more sophisticated protection system. There's actually sort of five different elements of, of limiting and protection uh, within the system that we're using for each band. So there's five for the low frequency band, there's five for the high frequency band, um, and there's more that are not even necessary at this point. But essentially, uh, with that level of protection, you, you can push quite hard and uh, not have the risk because we can protect it against what would put it at risk, even if you're using it in the lower number presets. So as you move up, again, you'll, you'll free up that energy. Uh, so bear in mind, that's how to best utilize these, uh, these new functionalities. Now, onto the what do these programs do? There's eight presets in each top box, and there's eight presets in each subwoofer of the new Mark, th Mark III line, and the, the combination that gives you like 64 different possible combinations. And so what you can do is match the high pass and low pass filter frequencies uh, and run them at similar levels. If you're going to boost your low frequency levels up, that shifts your crossover, your effective crossover frequency up in frequency, so you can then shift the frequency of the crossover, the high frequency, um, high pass filter in the top box higher and get a smooth transition. There is no preset that isn't compatible with any other preset. So you can run any combination 
you have the freedom to choose the one that you think sounds the best. And that's the point of having them there. Um, if you measure, if you listen, there is going to be a best, um, but it is oftentimes more opinion than it is uh, fact. So you, you, there's no wrong answer, but uh, there's nothing that will be incompatible. There won't be any cancellations. If you've set the boxes where they're supposed to go, either front next to each other or um, on poles, you will be aligned in any preset with any other box uh, that you can combine it with. A key advantage to this updatable functionality here is that we've had the opportunity to improve things. I mean, our, our, our whole philosophy is to keep making things better. And what this gives us is the ability to provide those improvements, those updates to owners of these products immediately, you know, not waiting for the next um, product release, the next update. It can be essentially downloaded and loaded into your cabinets. Um, and it gives you an immense amount of potential presets, effectively unlimited. Like I said, you can store up to 100 on the unit. You can download as many different versions of different files that we release. You can store your own um, and you can load those in. So the number of different combinations is effectively unlimited. Um, and so you, you have all of that and the combination of the ability to integrate any of these boxes and that, that functionality, that feature is not going to go away. So even with whatever updates that you might do, any updates, any personal settings that you create, you won't be, um, you won't be putting the system out of whack, it'll, it'll work properly. One of the reasons why we did this update in the way we did is to eliminate the need for any outboard processing. Not the need, because you never had the need, but really the temptation for outboard processing has been eliminated. You can do anything that you would possibly need to do with outboard processing now from your laptop. Another major um, point of the upgrade is that we have waterproof PowerCon True One connectors, and the input section of this cabinet is backed by a waterproof section or a waterproof shield. So these can be more comfortably used outdoors. Um, these connectors are IP65 rated. Um, this is, uh, the exact IP number would be the same, except for there are some entry points here uh, but they're protected behind that contact point. So um, in, in effect, what we've done is um, not limit the access to your gain control and your preset select and, and all the connectivity, but we still protected the electronics internally so that anything that might get into this section won't damage the electronics. The DSP is isolated, the amplifier is isolated. It's just the connectors uh, that are necessarily a little bit more exposed. So if you do need to do gigs outdoors or if people are, you know, spraying champagne or whatever at your events, um, you can not worry quite so much about that. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoy uh, what we have here and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next one.